Hey guys, Cam here from Pocketlint. Now Samsung is well known for putting in new features and interesting things into their software. And with the latest version of One UI running on Android Pie on these new phones, there's plenty to sink your teeth into. And we've got some great tips for you to try. But first we wanted to say thanks to EE for partnering with us on this video. If you're still stuck and not sure whether you want to buy the S10 or where to buy it from, give EE a look. I'll leave a link to their offers in the description box below and just as a quickie EE tip, switch on Wi-Fi calling when you do order one. That way you get crystal clear calls over your wireless network. Just drop down the settings shade and search for the Wi-Fi calling toggle and switch it on. It's that simple. Without further ado, here are your tips and tricks. Now first up is wireless power sharing. Now what's really cool, even if it is a little bit of a gimmick, is wireless power share. You can use it to wirelessly charge other products, like the Galaxy Buds for example. Just drop down the setting shade from the top and select wireless power share from the tiles, and then turn the phone upside down and place your other device on top. We'd advise using a case though, because that glass back is quite slippery. Number two is quick searching. Now if you're wanting to find something on your phone but don't know where it is, just swipe down anywhere on your home screen or swipe up to launch the app drawer and then start typing in the finder window at the top. You can find anything on your phone from settings, apps, contacts and even calendar appointments. It's surprisingly powerful and fast. And you can also drop down the quick setting shade to access it by tapping the search icon in the top corner. Now, if you want to, you can also add a shortcut to your home screen. Just tap on the finder settings toggle and add finder. And now you'll have a dedicated finder icon in your app drawer and also one on your home screen. Next up is using the navigation gestures instead of the buttons. Now this is something that's become quite popular on Android, and now Samsung's jumping on the bandwagon as well. Instead of tapping on the home, recent apps and back icons, you can swipe to go home, go back, or launch the multitasking recent apps view. To activate it, head to settings, display, navigation bar, and activate the full screen gestures. You can also decide if you want visual indicators to show you where you should swipe by having hints switched on. Toggle them off if you don't want them. Now you can swipe on the left to go to recent apps, swipe the middle to go home, or swipe on the right to go back, or swipe and hold in the middle to launch Google Assistant. Number four is getting your home screen to rotate to landscape. So by default, when you turn your phone in horizontal or landscape mode, your home screen doesn't rotate when you turn your phone. But if you want to use it horizontally, head to your home screen settings by long pressing on the wallpaper and hitting home screen settings. Now you'll find an option where you can toggle on the home screen rotation. Next up is remapping that Bixby button. And this is probably one of the biggest points of contention with the latest Samsung phones. That physical button being restricted to Bixby. Thankfully, you can now use that button to launch something else instead. So head to settings, advanced features, and then Bixby key. Sadly, you can't just remove Bigsby from it, but you can make it open another app on a single or double click. Although quite sadly, one of those options isn't Google Assistant or Alexa. Once you've selected the app that you want to use, next time you press that button, you'll be able to launch it quickly. Number six is getting rid of the app tray. Now, if for whatever reason you decide you'd rather have all your apps all over your home screen, go to the home screen settings by long pressing the wallpaper and choosing the settings option. Now select home screen layout and choose home screen only. Once selected, all your app icons will be all over your home screens instead. Number seven is your always on display, how to switch it on and how to customize it. Now one of Samsung's best features over the last few years has been always on display. It shows important snippets of information on a black screen constantly. Now it may not be activated by default, so if you want to go to settings, lock screen and always on display and toggle it on. Now among the new customization options is the ability to have it only show up when you tap the screen while in standby. You'll find this under display mode. Now if you're conscious of battery life, this is a great setting. Or if you want it only during the day, you can choose to schedule it instead. Now the option underneath display mode, there's an orientation option that lets you switch it to landscape, which is pretty handy at night especially if you happen to lean your phone up horizontally against the stand. Go back to lock screen settings and then choose clock style before choosing the always on option. And now you can also choose from a number of different designs and a number of different colors. Number eight, 
The popular choice among everybody these days is Dark Theme. Now, thanks to the AMOLED screen tech, it's really effective and more importantly, saves battery life by switching off individual pixels. If you head to settings, display, and then night mode, it switches the interface dark gray and black, like Batman. Number nine is making sure your screen is using the full resolution. So by default to save battery and processor usage, Samsung sets your screen resolution to full HD+. But if you head to settings, display, screen resolution, now choose QHD+, and you'll get to use all of those pixels, making the image seem a little bit sharper. Number 10 is one of the coolest ones and definitely worth trying out, and it's personalizing sound quality. Samsung speakers have been tuned with the help of AKG, and with Dolby Atmos on board, there's plenty here to play with. If you go to settings, sound and vibration, advanced sound settings, and then sound quality, you can choose to adjust the equalizer to meet your preferences, as well as switching Dolby Atmos on to create a surround sound-like effect. Tap on adapt sound, and you can also choose to add a personalized sound profile. This then takes you through a process that takes you a few minutes using your own headphones in a quiet space. It plays a series of beeps in different frequencies to see how good your hearing is for each of those frequencies and then builds a profile based on that. Once you've done that, you should have a sound profile that suits you right down to the ground. Number 11 and another cool one based on the camera this time is Best Shot. Now what this does is it automatically detects what's in the shot and tells you how to frame it better. Open the camera, tap the settings cog, and you'll see the option to enable it. Now when you point it at a person or a subject, it can tell you where to aim the camera to make it even better. Number 12 quickly is shooting HDR, and one of the features that's actually really impressive is the ability to shoot HDR 10 plus video. It's a beta labs feature at the moment, but you can switch it on. Go to camera settings, advanced recording functions, and then switch on the HDR 10 plus toggle. Lastly is edge lighting. Now this isn't exactly a new feature, but it's very cool. Go to settings, display, edge screen, and edge lighting. Now you can choose to have the edges light up with notifications or nominate the apps you want to allow to do it, as well as choosing the pattern and the color you want it to play. So those are your tips and tricks for the Galaxy S10 and the S10 Plus. We hope you found those useful. If you want to do a little bit more digging, we've done a full in-depth tips and tricks article on pocketlint.com. Again, I will leave that link in the description box. But until next time, I've been Cam. I'm at Cam Bunton on Twitter. Hit that thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you again soon.